Here I have assembled a triforce of crafting, aluminium wire, foil and clay, and I've started by turning them into a bo by turning them into Ganon's body. With some doubled up armature wire for legs, we can put him in a menacing crouching pose and mount him solidly on a wooden base. Ganon's a certified uh, thick boy. I don't want to spend all my rupees on clay, so before I add that, I wrap the legs in aluminium foil. Then it's on to sculpting the muscles. After some intense butt sculpting, the legs are complete. And we can move on to Ganon's massive ball. foot. Ganon's foot. These pieces of clay get squished into rectangles with four toes cut into them. Then I poke some holes for pre-baked claws. Claws which I will continue to break all of throughout the sculpting. I blend it onto the leg and use some worm dealies to form the outline of his gaiters. Using popsicle sticks and a rolling pin, I can flatten a nice even piece of clay, which I can continue to cut and prod and poke and shape until I have a good looking crotch flap. For a tiny bit of added realism, I sculpt some folds and wrinkles into the fabric. To keep that stuff in place, he needs a stylish leather belt. Ganon once again proves that he is not only the king of thieves and evil, but also of fashion with this skull belt buckle. Ganon actually has killer abs, but they almost always get covered up by his massive pectorals. Here we're keeping the skull theme going. With this piece of plastic from a bottle of Ramuna, I can poke some holes in his vest to make room for his arms. The arms get the same treatment as the legs, and then I can start bulking them up with lots of clay. Even though I'm sculpting a pig demon, keeping an eye on an anatomical chart or a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, can really come in handy when sculpting muscles. I like to build the hands like this. Then I add the claws and the initial wrinkles and stuff before I attach it to the arm. This blend is getting covered up with a vambrace. And once one is done, it's easy to make another uh, one. Ganon's evil looking staff gets a core of chopstick. Then I assemble the head from these pieces I assembled earlier. Including more skulls. As always, it's about a million times easier to sculpt the hand holding something. The head gets a core of aluminium foil wrapped in clay. It's a bit more forgiving to sculpt a face like this compared to a human one. And it was really fun to sculpt such an expressive cartoony face. I'm trying to get somewhat realistic textures in the mouth. <coughs> Done! Looking good. There's something missing though. Alright, oh, his bunny ears. They are looking a little bit more dynamic than I remember. There we go.
Cannon has a lot of neck, so I don't need an armature wire to attach the head to the body. Instead we're just squishing its head straight onto a lump of clay, and adding some additional neck, and some additional meat on the cheeks. His cape is just a big flat rectangle. For the shape of the pollens though, I'm molding them over this plastic palette. And it wouldn't be the Ganon we all know and love without an additional spike. As for this piece on the back of the cape, I only had the pixel art to work from. And it's not showing a lot. But I think this design turned out okay. As for the symbol on the back, I decided it had to be the Grudu Crest, also known as a lemon with glasses. Based on its copper e color, I decided it had to be made from metal, so I stippled it with a sculpting tool to give it a nice hammered finish. The back of the cape would look very barren without any details, so we added a bunch of folds and wrinkles for additional detail and realism. The last task to complete before we move on to the painting is repairing all those claws I broke off. Sweet. And here we are in the spray booth with the finished sculpt. I also made this round base with the tile pattern from the boss fight room. Anyway, let's paint. While I'm painting, I'd like to take the time to express my gratitude to the couple of guys that's been leaving some very nice comments on my latest videos. It makes me really happy to read and I'm getting really excited to keep on making these videos. So, thank you. For the yellow parts I started with demonic yellow, but added a tiny bit of red for the final layers. In addition to painting the actual bronze colored pieces of the shield, I also dry brushed the red part to make it look like the paint had been scraped off over time. That's all the flat colors done, but if you look at the actual art, you can see there's a lot of shading going on. It's very simple and cartoony, and I'd like to imitate that on the actual figure. Lots of people do this successfully on Gundam models, which are my initial inspiration for this. I can see why it works a bit better on them though, as they have lots of sharp angles and edges, which Ganon very much lacks. Okay, we're nearing the end. It's been fun, but now let's have a look at the finished piece.